What's up, college football fans, lovers of ESPN, Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith, and guys that are sending 40% of their entire gross income to the cable company to be able to afford ESPN. Don't complain about ESPN and then pay your cable bill. Dude, cancel cable right now. You don't need it. You've got Netflix. You've got Hulu. You've got these other services. You do not need to send 40% of your gross income to the cable company just to pay for ESPN. But let me get this off my chest. As a lifelong Hurricane fan, I I couldn't have been more proud of those kids for running back that Dukey on them like that Saturday night against Duke. That's real murder ball. That's how we grew up playing football in the streets, laterals, pitching it to other guys, and then smoking it right down the sideline for the game-winning touchdown. But since Miami has Coach Scott now, who's not white like Al Golden, he got his first win, and all of a sudden it's a big controversy. ESPN, mainstream media, all the loudmouths and blattermouths would have never tried to pull that stuff against Al Golden because he's a white. But let me paint the picture for you and tell you exactly how it's going to go down here. As a lifelong 30-year representative of the Miami Hurricanes, take the win, Duke. This meaningless, pathetic Regular season ACC win that means absolutely nothing. It'll probably end up being the biggest win in the history of Duke football, which is a joke. Unlike the 2003 Fiesta Bowl when two of the best teams in the country battled it out into triple overtime and Ohio State stole the national championship from the University of Miami, this is not what happened Saturday night. This is two garbage teams that stink that are fighting over a meaningless, pathetic win for the Coastal Division of the ACC? Are you kidding me? So, Duke, take the win back, but I'll tell you what you won't be taking back, okay? You won't be taking back the memories and the moments that the University of Miami players experienced after the game. You won't. Those kids were dancing, having the time of their lives, and no ACC official or anybody that doesn't have a time machine is going to do a damn thing about that, and you can't take away the flight back to Miami, which I imagine was one of the biggest parties in the history of Miami, which is a pretty good list to be on because Miami's a party city. We have all the big clubs, all the big party scenes. This is where the celebrities go to party. So I can only imagine how crunk those boys were getting on the flight home after humiliating Duke on national television and waking up Monday morning to find out that they're again the most hated team in football. I don't want to hear media bias from politicians. You have no idea what media bias is until you wake up and put on every single channel and they're saying you've got to turn back the, uh, you've got to give back your win. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying that to any of these politicians, any of these other people that cry about media bias when, in all actuality, media and reporters and actors and Hollywood people and directors are the real heroes. All right, they're out there emoting and using their craft to entertain everybody else that uh, sits home and watches TV on a late Saturday night when it's Halloween. You people obviously didn't participate in and any serious trick-or-treating. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been home to watch the Miami Duke ending anyway. And anybody that trick-or-treats during daylight hours is a nerd. In closing, Duke, take the pathetic regular season win total or one win to increase your total for this season. Congratulations on a coastal ACC win that is worth absolutely nothing. Secondly, the blatant racism of doing this to a black coach on his first win when they would have never done this to Al Golden and his stupid tie and his stupid face. And three, it's all about that you, baby. All about that you!